Um, hello, my name is Yannick, and this is... And I'm Sarah Stuckman, the producer of the film, He's and the director. And we're here with Misfits, uh, a film about um, queer kids struggling uh, uh, with being themselves in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay, let's start. Yep. Um, thank you so much for bringing Misfits uh, to the Berlin Island, to the Teddy Awards, of, of course, too. One of my first questions would be how um, did you come across that very interesting story as a Danish filmmaker? Um, I read an article about the youth center in, in Tulsa okay. uh, and this image of a tiny youth center squeezed in between two big churches it kind of, you know, got me curious and I contacted the center and they invited me over. And what was, what was the story you had in mind immediately? Was it just kind of like visiting the youth and accompanying them and like looking into their lives or did you have a specific story? I, I, was, I, was, I was curious about, you know, what kid would find the courage to, you know, to come out as, you know, as a 13, 14 year old uh, teenager in, in, in a, a strongly conservative environment mm -hmm. and, and uh, why not wait? And, and that's, that's what triggered me. Mm -hmm. And what did you, as a producer, what did con what convinced you in a way to get well, get on? I, I knew um, Yannick's films from before, where mm -hmm. he's, he has this ability to get very close with the character, and he has this very sensitive eye. And um, he approached me before he went to Tulsa for the first time, and I was like, "Well, yeah, I'm excited to see what you're coming back with." And actually, the first trip. He went. He came home with one of the um, one of the turning point scenes in the film um, that are very strong. So, so it was very easy for me to um, to come on board and say that I would support it. How how do you or how did you approach those young people? Did you first travel there and kind of introduce yourself without a camera and then build a relationship, or what's your um, process? I, I went there um, one week without without a camera, just my just my own camera, um, and and talked to different kids and their parents and the club and stuff and then um, I had I had a young camera guy who I, from Finland actually who I knew and, and he was in New York doing something anyways and so he went to Tulsa and and we did some we, we did some filming together some of the scenes um, because because you know I mean once once you start talking to the characters you never know what comes out so so I was I was quite um, I wanted I wanted to, to film the, the, my first meeting with them, and, and as Sarah said, one of one of my first meetings was actually is is a key scene in the film, so I'm glad I did it. Um, do you think that as a European, especially a Danish filmmaker, you show a, a different America than maybe an American filmmaker would have done? Um, I might not take everything for granted, you know, I mean, and and I think that's that's one of the beauties about. Going, you know, going outside, you know, yeah. going to other countries, traveling, uh, because because you see, you see, you see things in in a different way, you know, and, and what's beautiful to me might not be beautiful to you because you live there, right? So there's this whole um, new way of, of 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 seeing things and and communicating. What would you say like fascinated you or still fascinates you most about these young people? I think it's very um, ultra conservative and a dangerous bubble in a way. I think it's the it's it's their will to to be themselves. You know, I mean, it, it's like I'm I mean I'm not gonna wait. Like one one of the characters told me when 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 I did the interviews in the beginning for the film, she was like, "Why should I wait? You know, why cannot have a, why can't I have a girlfriend now? Just you know, I'm 15 years old. I want a girlfriend. You know, why do I have to wait till I'm 18, 19 and I can leave Tulsa?" And it just makes perfect sense. So who who finances and who organizes this, this youth center? How uh, do they get? Uh, it's it's strictly on volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. um, they get absolutely not fun, no funding at all. So it's so it's a lot of people working very hard, um, taking a lot of time out of out of their lives to to um, to run this youth center. And from your experience, I mean, we live in times where you could almost say that you know it's shouldn't be problematic anymore to be queer and young um, and especially in the US context where you had the Marriage Equality Act and the president you know su supporting kind of um, gay marriage and queer identities um, is that is there like um, is that true in a way if you go really into the the American daily life and you, you went into that 
ultra conservative Bible Belt. What, what what is your take on that? Um, I think we come we've come a long way, but I also think there's still a lot of crazy people out there. You know that for some reason they you know they they want to pull the you know the queer card like oh we can have it or you you guys are disgusting or or they use it like in political ways like like what we see now in Russia you know for instance. Or you know what's happening in in, in Uganda, and, and I mean it's it's I don't know. I mean I think we still have a lot to fight for, you know. But also like from a producer's point of view, you could easily say, oh, like this, no, this gay issue again, or this gay theme. Queer theme. Do you think there need to be more films produced and done? And how can you, as a filmmaker, convince producers to, you know, finance and support projects like that? I think, well, in terms of. of for instance, the educational system in Denmark, um, there's no content about being LGBT. It's like it's missing. So mm -hmm. this film, if you talk about is does it have something new to bring on? I think it has because uh, in the Danish public schools, it's like you can't bring up that topic. Um, now the um, educational minister of Denmark has says, hey, come on, guys, you have to change this. You can't only like bring in the 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 um, heteronormative perspective mm. in. We have to talk about something else as well, something is missing. So so we have, as a producer, you, I've experienced that there's actually uh, a lot of people that want to take this and bring it out. Bring it out. Mm -hmm. We're also um, working with Amnesty International uh, okay. that are backing the film and and try to bring it, bring it into this um, into a human right perspective as well. Um, so would you say this could have happened on any place or in any place on this planet? Is it is it is there something really specific to Oklahoma and um, that region, or is that just a general problem queer youth have to go through I think, wherever they are? I think what I found in Tulsa was you know sort of a concentration of everything. You know, so you know as a filmmaker, it made me easy for me because you know so you have a youth center, you have loads of kids there, they have loads of obstacles, loads of problems. You have love, you have frustration, you have. You have hatred. You have, you know, parents, family, and not understanding. So, so, you know, so, so it was easier than, you know, like, if I would have done this film in, let's say, Denmark, where, I, you know, I, I might go to one little town and I would find one uh, queer person, you know, and another town five, five hours away and would have the same problems, but that would be a different film, you know. So, so, so that's, that's what I found. Um, How was it for you as a filmmaker? Because there is. There, there are quite a lot of very emotional scenes um, to stay in the... I don't know how you define yourself as a filmmaker, if you, you know, are more into observational kind of like cinema or you like to build relationships and be empathetic. What, is, what was your... Um, I, I, don't, I, I actually don't... I mean, I've, I've read a couple of times now that, that this is an observational documentary. I don't, I don't find it so observational, actually. I, 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 I decided from the beginning that I would only show and film scenes that the kids would allow me to, you know. So, um, so you know, so so basically, I I follow them and and we talk about. So, what are you going to do today? Okay, what would you like to talk about? You know, when we film this, and um, so it's it's their film too. You know, um, having said that, I I, I obviously I I take. A huge interest in in people and, and and in different in different ways of living and different ways of thinking, and uh, and it, it is very emotional to me as well this the subject matter because I mean I kind of lived through it when I was a, when I when I was a teenager so you know that's what I was thinking because I was I thought I was done with that you know I was like this is past and then I saw these kids and I was like wow this is um, it really stirred up a lot of emotions in me too and I yeah, exactly um, it's it's uh, it hurts it really hurts to. To see that there are still young people who are having to go through this and being isolated in a way, um, I wanted to ask you too if um, it was kind of nerve-wracking to not really know where it might go and how it, you know, the product will end because I know producers well, like that. That's the charm of documentary, and yeah. that's that's a, that's part of every project that yeah. you don't you you start off somewhere and you have a feeling it will end up great at some point but you actually don't know which way it will turn but uh, but that that journey is also really interesting to be along so, so 
so it, it wasn't really nerve-wracking. I was, I was confident that he would uh, bring, bring it home. He did, <laughs> yeah, he really did. Thank you so much <laughs> for yeah. coming to the festival. Thanks, Thanks for having me.